Have you ever heard people around you drawing rapid conclusions uh, from a limited number of facts and you immediately think, come on, you are generalizing way too quickly. You must have. And since it's very common in everyday life to, to, like, to jump to conclusions and to draw conclusions with a limited set of anecdotal uh, facts, you must have faced what we call hasty generalization. A waiter was rude in a Parisian restaurant, then all Parisians are rude people. This is something I get to hear quite often. The issue with generalizations is that they correspond to an inductive form of reasoning, from the facts to the rule. As such, there is no method that enables you to tell uh, if an induction is legitimate or not, as opposed to deduction, where there are clear rules. As the notorious philosopher of science, Karl Popper, keeps reminding us, building upon the work of previous authors, there's no such thing as a criteria of induction. That would enable us to evaluate these inferences in a straightforward way. Let me give you two examples. The fact that the sun has been rising every morning for billions of years is quite a good reason to support a claim like the sun rises every morning. It looks like a pretty sound inductive reasoning, doesn't it? And therefore, nobody will believe you are stupid if, based on this rule, you claim the sun will rise tomorrow morning. Now, let's shift to another topic, ducks. Let's say we are in a warehouse where we grow ducks for the meat. It's quite common in France. Uh, one duck says to the other, hey, Jimmy, why do you believe they feed us every day and so on? Don't you believe that we will be the food at some point? Jimmy replies, well, they have fed us so far every morning and they have never killed us, not even a single one of us. So the rule is that they feed us every morning, so there's nothing to worry about. So the sad part of the story is that they are all dead the next morning. So you see, the structure of the argument is exactly the same for the sun and for the ducks. And yet, one reasoning is sound, the other, well, not so much. And you cannot tell just by looking at the structure of the argument, which one is good, which one is not. However, the fact that there are no clear criteria to tell whether an induction is good or not does not mean that we ought to let any claim unchecked. It is actually one of the main goals of science to perform such inductions, and one of the recurrent tasks that scientists are responsible for when peer reviewing is to assess the quality of the inductive reasoning of their colleagues. Let's take an example featuring a bit of data. Imagine an app. Uh, you can learn um, a language with this app in less than three weeks. Uh, and, well, that's what's uh, at least said on the advertisement. With this app, learn English in less than three weeks. Like, uh, it has been shown that 90% per per of people um, can learn English with this app in three months, or stuff like that. Even if some data were actually collected at some point to support these claims, there's no way to generalize properly in such a way. A more precise statement, and more accurate statement would be, a sample of learners, German natives, showed a significant improvement in English over the course of a three weeks intensive training based on the app, and especially when it comes to grammar rules. But it's not exactly the kind of thing that you would expect to read on an advertisement now, is it? Well, ads are hasty generalizations more often than not, anyway. It's not necessarily about changing radically the message, if you want to be accurate. It's about introducing precision.